What's up everybody, it's Ethan. And today I wanna to talk about this familiar reaction when you start talking about love in groups where love isn't normally talked about. It's the eye roll. Why does everybody roll their eyes when we start talking about love? AKA, why can't we take love seriously when it starts getting public? When we start bringing it out in the spaces beyond our houses or our relationships or our bedroom or our families. This is a really important topic and I have a couple thoughts as to why it is. First off, we know there's Valentine's Day. There's this kind of love culture. There's unicorns and rainbows and fairy tales and romance. And love is often associated with that. Love is often associated with this happily ever after type thing where the, the love story that works is the one where traditionally in heteronormative culture, man and women meet, Adam and Eve, whoever you wanna call it, they come together, they fall in love, and they live happily ever after. Boom, that's love. So anything that brings this message of love or this word love into the public sphere that's not related to romance, it's like, what are you doing? And also, if that didn't work for us, if we're not living that happily ever after story, which by the way, nobody is, then we're probably dealing with some heartbreak. We're probably a little bit jaded when it comes to thinking about this word love, especially as it's defined in our culture as this fairy tale thing. So when someone says, we just gotta love more, we gotta bring love into the workplace, we gotta bring love into our purpose, like me, right? I'm talking about that all the time. There's definitely this reaction of like, not this again. Come on, I can't take this seriously. I've been burned by love too many times before. Or I never knew love. My parents didn't love me. Or I don't even know my parents, right? There's so many contexts where love just doesn't exist in the frame of someone's reference. And when it starts to be brought up with this assumption that we all can just tap into it and access it at any moment, like it's this magical superpower we all have, which it is, uh, but we can't always tap into it. It's not just always there and ready at the ready whenever we need it. And we can't just say, oh, you know, all you need is love and forget about everything else that exists in the dynamics of being a human being. That said, I think it's time for us to start taking love seriously. And that means defining it, right? Getting serious about what it means for us, acting with love, having verbs like associated with love, our actions, and also recognizing that love isn't all the beautiful stuff. That's part of it. There's a lot of beauty in love. But love is also heartbreak, right? Love is also getting honest feedback from a friend. And sometimes honesty and truth sucks. Sometimes it hurts because it's coming from a place of truth and reality, but it's not what you wanna hear, right? Like the loving thing can sometimes really be painful to internalize. Sometimes love is grief, it's loss, and it's being able to hold family or friends together through a period of challenge, of darkness, right? Sickness, it could be disease or dis-ease, mental illness, darkness, right? Like love is so present in all of these things. I recently had a chance to talk to Valerie Kaur and read her book, See No Stranger, and she talks about love as grieving together. And there's something so powerful when someone can air what they're going through. Maybe it's a traumatic event. And in community, we can hold them. We can see them. We can be with them. That's why programs like 12 Step are so powerful, right? AA is so powerful because it's community coming together to hold people with love and with support. And that's not the fairy tale. That's not all about romance, right? That's about collective humanity. Seeing each other, seeing our shared struggles, and being able to come together to support one another through love. There's no eye rolling in dealing with alcoholism. There's no eye rolling in my personal experience dealing with a cancer diagnosis and facing mortality. That's not like something you just brush off and be like, whatever, love whatevs. No, it's like, hey, I see you. That must have been hard. How can I support you? What do you need? Or just share your story. Tell me more, be curious. I've relate, right? I've been through something similar, or I've seen some darkness too, or my family had this experience. So it's so important to recognize love is punk rock. It's metal, as my partner Michelle says, love is metal, dude. And love is scary. Going into that heartbreak, 
Confronting things vulnerably, being open about the darkness in our lives, that's a scary thing to do. But when we do it, we actually access more joy and connection and human fulfillment and vibrancy on the other side. So when you can confront your truth, when you can confront the challenging, honest feedback and get through it and not be defensive or put up a fight or numb out and avoid it, but rather go to it, look at it from all sides and feel it and let it set in, the other side of that is joy. It is that fulfillment, it is passion, it is connection, it is love for yourself and often in collective. You can share that, it starts to show up for you everywhere. But the reason why I use this word extremist with love, and I call myself a love extremist, is because I want people to take love seriously. And I think the word extremist is something people take very seriously. And so attaching that to love starts to make us think about how we can define love as extremists and how we can start to rethink love, not just as this fairy tale eye rolly thing, and it's like love and light, you know, we're, we're good for, with the world because we're all loving, but actually, no, we're intentional, we're extremist because we step into our day every day with love and with intention and with honesty and with the punk rock nature of facing that scariness, that fright, and being able to get beyond it, being able to get beyond the tough diagnosis or the challenging mental health crisis or the dis-ease or disease in our families and move past it. We're all going through this period with the pandemic and we need to come together and recognize humans are vulnerable. Our human species is vulnerable and we can love each other through this. We can get through this. A lot of it's about getting out of your comfort zone, right? It's about getting out of a place where you're chilling on the couch or you're having a beer and you're not thinking about it. You have to go into the darkness and into the spaces that don't make you feel always easy and comfortable. That's why love is the harder choice. Love is the challenge. To hate or to be in fear, that's kind of a, an easy thing to do, but it doesn't help you grow. You don't necessarily grow beyond it unless you can face it and move past it, unless you can overcome the fear, overcome the hate, face the trauma, face oppression, face the truths of our history, whether it be personal or collective, and show up in honesty and move towards a new future, towards something generative, towards something next, towards the evolution. So I wanna challenge all of you to find the loving path for yourself, to define what love means for you, and then recognize that you can use that tool to approach your challenges in your life and the dis-ease or the discomforts you have or the hard truths that you're facing. And then you can bring that into a relationship and see others who are facing those same challenges or similar challenges and share your personal stories of overcoming those or finding love through them. And then we can come together as connected individuals, seeing our shared humanity, our shared truth, our shared metallic love, the punk rock nature of the love that we have for ourselves and the challenges we face every day. And we can set out to face the challenges of our planet, the challenges of our institutions, of our nations, of our communities, and show up with love to the table. So that's my challenge for you. That's my challenge for me. Every day, I challenge myself to this quest to get after it and to stop rolling my eyes at love, but to get serious about what it means to be a love extremist and take love seriously. This is something that's life and death and I choose to live. Thanks for being here. Post a comment if this resonates, share it with your friends, subscribe, join us at extremist.love and I'll see you for the next one. Peace.